Let's determine if the relationship in this table is linear and then also write the function rule for it. So here's how you do these problems. For a, for a relationship to be linear, there has to be a constant rate of change. Constant rate of change. That means for every change, that triangle means change, in X, there is a consistent change in Y. So let's see, look at this graph. When I go up one, I go up how much? Five. When I go up one more, I go how much? Five again. When I go up one more, I go up how much? Five again. When I go up one more, I go up how much? Five. So is it linear? Yes, it's linear. Maybe not that one. Because every time I go up one, I go up five. If I were to go up two, let me do this in green. If I were to go up two from one to three, how much did I go up in the Y? I went up ten. So there's the rate. The rate of change is the same. The rate of change is five to one. Five is the rise as we call it, the change in the y's, change in y, and 1 is the run, or the change in x. If we were to look at a graph, this is what the graph would look like. It was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and it was uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. These are going by 5's. This is not a square graph. These are going by 1's. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So my constant rate of change, see what I did here? It was like that. There is a constant, and that's why it's called linear, because it makes a line when you, when you draw, when you plot the points and you connect them, it makes a line if it's linear, because every time I go up over one, I go up five. If I go over two, I would go up ten. If I go over 3, I would go up 15, etc. But the rate of change, 15 over 3, is the same as 5 over 1, which is just 5. All right, let's try another one. Sorry, before I do another example, let's first write the function rule. So how do we write a function rule? I'll do this in green. Function rules are always in the form, when it's, whenever it's linear, it's always going to be m, that's your constant rate of change, times x, plus b, this is your starting point. That means when y, I'm sorry, when x equals 0, when x equals 0, what, where did your graph start? So let's look right here, when x equals 0, it started, when x was 0, it started at 0. In other words, if I went down I'm sorry, I went, if I went to left 1, I would have to go down 5, and so I'd be at 0, 0. You can see that that's true, because if you're going 5 this way, then going backwards 1, or 5, would put me at 0, the starting point. I'll explain that more when we get to a more complicated one. So your equation is, this is your, called your slope, or your rate of change. Rate of change. And what's happening? It's going up 5. For every x, it raises by 5. You see how it's being multiplied by x? And you're adding 0 to it, so I, that's my answer. And let's just check it, see if it worked. When I plug in 1, what am I going to get for y? When I plug in 1 for x, what do I get for y? What's 5 times 1? 5. When I plug in 2 for x, what do I get for y? 5 times 2 is 10. So for every single time I go up one, I go, I go over one, I should say, on the x, or I add one to the x, I'm adding five to the y. For every, do you hear that for every? That's the times thing. For every x, I increase by five. All right, let's take a look at another example. All right, is this a linear function? Well, let's do that same check again. Let's check to see every time I go up, notice I'm going up by one here. Every time I go up by 1, what am I going up by over here? 
Can you see it? I'm increasing by 0.5 each time. So is it linear? Yes, it's linear. And what's the slope? What's the rate of change? Well, the rate of change is 0.5. I'm going up for every time I go over 1 on the x-axis, I go up 0.5. So here's the little trick. Remember, y equals mx plus b. Well, I've got, to, I've got to go backwards to get to B, right? If I go back 0.5, where am I going to be? Subtract 0.5 from this, and I'll be at what? 2, when X is at 0. So my starting point is 2, and what am I adding every time I add 1, X, what am I adding to the Y? I'm adding 0.5, so it's 0.5X. There's my equation. Let's check it. Plug in some points. When I plug in 1, what's 0. 0.5 times 1? 0.5. What's 0. 0.5 plus 2? 2.5. 2.5. Let's try a different one. Let's try 4. When I plug in 4, what's 0. 0.5 times 4? 0.5 times 4 is 2. 0.5 means 1 half, right? So there's 2 plus 2, which equals what? 4. That worked. So every time, look at this function rule. This linear function is super important. It's maybe very simple to some people, but it's very complicated because you're thinking um, in very... In, in, in letters, you're thinking in, in pictures and in letters and stuff, it could be very confusing, but it's really important that you understand what it means to be a linear function and how to come up with that function rule, and hopefully you understand it better now.